Part 3 Ken Brune, The Dramatist I have no family, not in any real sense. My mother and I have been at war for years. A down in the gutter, full guns blazing, campaign till she had a stroke. To my amazement, I began to ease up on her. She was recovering slowly, and though we'd hardly become close, there had been a definite shift in perspective. I was due to visit her soon, her minder companion, F.R. Malaki, was as firm as ever in his hatred of me. Like I gave a shit. When Jeff and Kathy had their baby, I felt the barrenness of my life was neon lit. As godfather to their child, I tried to show more interest than, I, than I'd have imagined. Back at Bailey's, I hung the calendar on my wall. Jeanette, the chambermaid, would be heartened to see it. Time ago, when my drinking was way on the edge, she'd left me. A leaflet about Matt Talbot. No doubt my current state she'd attribute to a miracle from Matt. I was definitely on the up. Had a mini-fridge in my room, stocked with yogurt and Galway spring water. Opened a bottle now and stretched on the bed. Flicked the remote and caught the opening of Oz, the muscular Australian prison drama. Little did I know the serendipity at work here. If I'd known, would I have acted differently? Right, then, my life was on track, as close to normal as it had ever been. Would I have opted to continue the road to citizenship, or was I already straining at the leash? Things were hearing up on Oz. Things were heating up on us. There had been an exec execution. An inmate was dying from AIDS and another was ordered to kill a new arrival. To say it was heavy would be some understatement. I turned it off, then vaguely considered Six Feet Under, the HBO series about a family of undertakers. In the last episode, a corpse lost a foot and various mayhem followed involving a gay cop. Thomas Lynch should have sued. I decided to read instead. I'd enough black humor on the streets every day. Had been dipping into the journals of Jean Rise. Her sense of displacement always resonated. I'd once heard her describe as a citizen of the dispossessed, following a trail of disaster across the dismal landscape of her mind. For, for a time, she'd lived up above a pub in Maidstone during the 1940s, a grim, area, a grim era, she wrote. I must write. If I stop writing, my life will have been an abject failure. It is that already to other people. But it could be an abject failure to myself. I will not have earned death. This set off all sorts of bombs in my mind. The phone rang, and I put the book aside with relief. Went. Yeah? Jack, it's Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Pause. I could almost hear her measure her words. Instinct shouted it was going to be a heavy one. <laughs> then, I need a favor, Jack. Sure, hun, if I can. Stuart wants you to visit. Who? A sigh, underlit by impatience. The drug dealer. Your drug dealer? Oh, she rushed now. Get it out. Get it done. He's put you on the visitors list for Wednesday at 3 p.m. You have to be on time or else it's wait another week. 
My mind was running the numbers, but not er not very well, so I tried to stall. But he's in Mount Joy. That's Dublin. Her patience was gone. Unless they moved. This was more like her old spark. The Kathy of the punk days. The ex-junkie I had first met with barbed wire in her mouth, tattoos along her arms. Truth is, I missed the old version. Since Jeff and the baby, she'd lost her edge. Had mutated into a gombean, pseudo-Irish, choline. Jesus. Now she waited. I, fal I faltered, said, Kathy, I don't know about this. She'd been expecting such, said, He'll pay your expenses. Booked your room in the Royal Dublin. Wouldn't want you to inconvenience yourself at any stage, would we, Jack? Think of it as a holiday. I didn't answer, and she said, You owe, Jack. Hey, Kathy, give me a break. I paid him for his services. He was freaking he was a freaking drug dealer. How do I owe him? Not him, you owe me. This was true. I tried to find some words to get off the hook, but none came. I said You've got me, I guess. If she was relieved, she wasn't letting it show. Said I've left an envelope with Miss Bailey. I've got cash, train times, and the hotel reservation. You were pretty certain I'd agree. Well, even you, Jack, have a sense of obligation. I felt this was a cheap shot. For Christ's sakes, I was godfather to a child. I counted with... You seem to have covered all the angles. Heard her intake of breath, then. If I'd all the angles covered, Jack, I'd have ended my friendship with you a long time ago. And she hung up. During my years as a guard, I'd met all kinds of people, usually the scum of the earth. A time I was stationed in Cavan, I arrested an old man for urinating in a public space. Yeah, Cavan was high crime zone. Got him in the car, and I did feel petty. He said, Son, the thing with friends is they aren't ever, and I mean ever, allowed to make you feel bad. That's the rule of the rest of the world. I was young then, full of peace and wind, said in my temple, temple more tone, I'm not your friend. He gave a tired smile, said, Sure, guards have no friends. I forgot his face, but I remember his words. Was I angry with Cathy? Let me put it this way. I was going to have a hard job explaining to Miss Bailey, Mrs. Bailey, sorry, why I punched a hole in the bathroom wall. Didn't break my knuckles, but it was a close call. Miss Bailey handed me a fat envelope, said, That young girl, Cathy, she left it for you. Thanks. I hefted the envelope in my palm, figuring this was a lot of cash. Mrs. Bailey was staring at me, and I snapped. What? Probably a little sharper than I intended. She took a step back. Then, that girl, Kathy, she's not one of you. She's not one of our own. Not an Irish, I mean. No, she's from London. She has a breed of an Irish accent. Yes, she went native. She chuckled. Her tongue shook her head, dismissing such nonsense, said, They think if they buy a clodog ring, 
and use the Lord's name, it makes them one of us. As if that could ever happen. I gave a tight smile, turned to go, said, Sorry if I was a bit sharp. She assessed me. Then, you were sharp, and I don't think you're sorry. I think you regret the action as you're fond of that control. Tis the guard in you. I didn't think there was a whole lot to be gained in debating the point. So I said, I'll be in Dublin for two days. Oh, are you working again? No, it's to visit someone. Are they sick? There's a parrot. And that's part three of Ken Brune, the dramatist. I apologize for the accents. I'm I'm just this is a cold read, so I I, I got lucky by hitting the original guy's accent in the first place. Alright, well that's it. Bye.